Well, as some of you know, um, I had a cold recently, and I'm pretty much over it, but just a little stuffed up still, stuff draining in my throat. I just can't seem to quite get 100% over it. So um, my, my doctor prescribed um, some puzzles. So I've got my puzzle prescription here. I'm just going to pop this thing open, and uh, we're going to pull out, um, let's see, a pencil. So pencil puzzles. We have a prescription for pencil puzzles. We're doing pencil puzzles today. All right, our first pencil puzzle today is a ring ring. This one is by Jovial. Um, I've done some ring rings before. In fact, there was one in the Secret Santa puzzle that I did recently. So um, I, I kind of know what's going on at least. Um, I've never done any advanced ring rings. So luckily this is a genuinely approachable pencil puzzle. Um, so the way ring ring works is um, we're drawing rectangular loops through the centers of empty cells. So something like this would be a ring. Um, so every cell gets used. So we have to fill, we have to use every cell, every white cell in the grid. Um, the rectangles can intersect, but they can't. Um, so you could do something like this. They can intersect, but you couldn't do something like that. They can't share an edge. And I don't think you could do like this either, where they, they intersect at a corner. So the sides can cross each other but that's about all they can do for intersections. So, and that's it, that's all the rules. So, um, like usual, link in the description. I'm gonna give it a shot, uh, reset the timer. Okay, so I mean, <clears throat> we can do this much, right? Which means that has to go there. But this could go further. Okay, we can do, that one has to be that way. And so now, and this, this can't go down any farther or it's going to end up intersecting so it's got to turn there okay this has to yeah this this has to go this way okay and we can't have these uh if this turned then we'd have an intersection there so this has to go that way and that's got to continue up same thing here yep okay uh we can do uh this one's got to be this is this is kind of um come on there you go like this, that's the same as this corner, but turned a little bit. Uh, let's see, this could go. Yeah, in fact, this has to come through there, doesn't it? So that's going to force, this has got to go up. This has to go up because you can't come through the black cell here. Now, <clears throat> ah, now this one here, if this goes to the right there, it can't turn it'll be intersecting if it goes here it'll be intersecting it can't go any farther so it actually has to turn there so that's got to be a short one and now this can't intersect with there or there can't do either of those it could go all the way over here though i think but that forces these up farther oh but we have to do right because this this cell has to be included so it's got to be part of a and this has to go all the way over here now if this goes any farther it'll intersect with one of these so it's got to be yeah and see yeah right so that's going to push this up which is going to push this up which is going to force this one to go all the way over to there this has got to go up there these are going higher yeah keep going keep going now they run into the black Duh. and so this has to go here and now Wait, what did I do? I did something wrong. Oh, this one, I extended this one up when it's done. It's a ring, it's done. Yeah, so this is gonna go here. This one goes at the top, yep, and this one goes there, perfect. <clears throat> there we go, complete. All right, cool puzzle, that was really fun. Um, nice ring ring, and good idea with, um, it, was, it was good for a, an approachable one, you know, kind of a first puzzle too, because it sort of taught you some of the ideas of, um, you know, starting with the corners, you had to kind of, it forced some of these and then the overlapping, avoiding the overlapping, forcing the rings to keep growing, basically. Cool puzzle. All right, on to the next one. All right, so next up is Try Place. Um, this puzzle is by Freddie Hand. Um, and the rules say, divide the grid into regions of three orthogonally connected cells. A clue on the bottom of a blocked cell represents the number of rectangular regions in the vertical line below it and a clue on the right side of a block cell represents the number of rectangular regions in the horizontal line to its right. 
Clues cannot see regions through other black cells. Okay, so um, this is a little confusing. I've never done one of these before. Um, I had to do a little of um, <laughs> looking at the rules uh, online to understand what was going on here. But essentially, what it's saying is all the clues are either pointing down or to the right. So that part, I think, is clear enough. The six is saying six down. This is saying zero down. This is saying three to the right. Um, and it, what it's what you're doing is you're dividing the grid into... Oh, oh, okay, so apparently we can draw lines. Okay, we can click... Yep, so we can left-click or right-click to scroll through green and yellow, I think, are the colors there. So we could do, you know, yellow like that, and then we could do green like that. And so it's... Oh, that one has to be green. So three-cell regions, something like this. Now, what the clues are telling us, and this is the part that I actually didn't understand at first, um, because I think I was just being slow, but in case somebody else has the same problem as me, the clues are telling you, because I didn't understand how you could have a zero clue. I'm like, the zero has to be seeing a region, but the key there is it's telling you how many rectangular regions it sees. So, for example, if you had a region like this, this is not rectangular. Of course it's not rectangular, but... I just wasn't understanding how that works. So it's telling us how many rectangular regions it sees. So there we go. I'm going to try this. Um, I don't know. I don't know how this one's going to go. We'll see. Uh, give it a try. Let's see what you do. Um, I'm going to re reset the timer here. And okay. So the six, there's six cells below it. So these six all have to be part of rectangular regions and different rectangular regions, right? So, but I don't know, I mean, I was going to say I could draw a line to say it has to go, but, but it could be, you know, something that goes like this and not to the left, or it could be the opposite. It could go just to the left and not to the right. So we don't think we can really say too much about those yet. Um, now this one sees zero. So both of these have to be part of, uh, you know. Like an L shape. Well, yeah, because you can only do... If, if you take two cells out of a three-cell region, no matter how you arrange them, they have to be in a straight line. Um, so the third one is either going to continue the straight line or it's going to turn it into an L, no matter where you put it. So we either have Ls or straight lines. Those are our only options. So these two both have to be part of... L's, but they could be the same L. Um, what I'm wondering is, can this cell be part of one like this? Because, yeah, it can. Because then this, this could do um, that. Ah! I want to drag to erase things and I can't. Okay. Um, these also all have to be parts of L's with the zero there. And these all have to be parts of L's to the right. No, but only to the only to here. Only these two. Because the clues can't see through other clue cells. So I must be missing something. Where do we start here? Oh, oh, right, okay, yeah, that's where we start. The six here tells us that these two are parts of separate rectangular regions. So I'm just gonna color the, in fact, we could do, let's just do, this would be a good way to start, right? These all have to be different, so we've got our colors. Um, now these two here have to be parts of L's. And we can't do that because this one would be part of that, which would be straight through. So I think, yeah, yeah, these two cannot go to the left because these, because of the six, these two cells have to be parts of rectangle rectangles, but these two have to be parts of L's, so they cannot be parts of the same region, so we do that, right? 
And yes, and so now, well, okay. We can do that, but they don't necessarily have to be different, actually. They have to be different than the ones to the right. And in fact, they have to be the same, because the only way to make this one an L is there or there, and that would isolate this one either way. So they must be part of the same region. Oh, we can draw lines. <laughs> I guess I should have realized. This seems obvious, doesn't it? You can draw lines along the edge of the grid. Um, okay. So now this obviously can't go there. You'd have an isolated cell there. So it has to be this way. Okay. So there we go. We've got that. Now that forces these to be this way. This one has to come over here and it has to be a rectangle. So it's got to be like that. Um, these, I mean, this has, there's no option there. That's got to be that way. This one needs to see three rectangles to the right. So these three can't be all the same rectangle here. But two of them have to be, no, no, right. They can't all three be the same rectangle. Two of them have to be parts of rectangles and one has to be part of an L. Um, we know these two go together. And this one can't see any rectangles below it, so we can't continue over. This has to come up this way. So, oh, and so yeah, so the, uh, this one here cannot be part of a rectangle because of the zero, but we know two of these cells over here have to be hearts of rectangles. So these have to, so this is gonna have to be, uh, let's see. Uh, I want more than two colors. <laughs> That's all right, we can draw the edges. So it's got to be like this. This one has to be part of a rectangle. This one has to be part of an L, and so does this. Okay, there we go. One, this needs to have two, so they've got to be, um, let's do that one in yellow. Got to be like that. Um, now this has to come out this way. It can't connect across, the, oh yeah, it can, never mind, never mind. Um, the zero here. So these two have to be not parts of, um, I think it's going to end up being the same thing as here, isn't it? These have to not be parts of rectangles. If they were different, mm, no, they could, yeah, yeah, because because this one right here can't be, it has to be part of a rectangle. It can only go one more to the right because these two are the same region here. Um, here, I'm gonna make those green just so that we know that it's different than that one. Um, so it can only go one, so it has to go one to the left. It could go one more to the left, but it has to go at least one to the left. And so now the only way for this green to be part of an L is if it goes this way, which would isolate that yellow. So these are the same region um, can't go right there, because that would isolate this corner. It could get either one of these, though, at this point, I think. Uh, this three already sees three rectangles here. That's its three rectangles in here, so the rest of these in this column have to be parts of L's, so this green cannot go that way. It's got to go up or down. And this one... Um, is there any other clues that we haven't used yet? I think that's all the clues. So we just need to finish here. Um, so this one. Oh, these two, right. Because these cells here have to be parts of L's, we know that the green and the yellow here can't go two to the right. They can only go at most one to the right, so they have to go one to the left. And now these two, I mean, we can't, we can only use one for the green or one for the yellow here. This one can only, there, there's nothing, this one has to be part of this green. It can't be part of this yellow or this green up here, and there's only two empty cells, so it's got to go that way. This yellow has to go this way. So that will leave, oop, this one as a, 
an L. This one has to be part of an L as well, so it goes this way. Um, I'm gonna make that one yellow. I don't know why. I just felt like making it yellow. Uh, look, this one is part of one of these two. Oh, this has to be part of an L here, so it's got to turn and go that way. And so now this cell has to be yellow. This cell has to be green. There we go. I'm gonna fill this one in yellow just for completeness. Oh, that took me a lot longer than it probably should have. Um, I don't know why, I just had a hard time figuring out the logic on that one. Hmm, interesting. Sometimes certain puzzle types just, you know, click and you're just like, oh, this is easy, do, 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 do. Um, uh, and, and sometimes it you just have a hard time with it. Like Hey Awake. I have a hard time with Hey Awake as well. Um, as you may know if you watched my video solving my Secret Santa puzzle. So, All right, that was Triplace. That was a fun puzzle type, um, even though I struggled with it a little bit. Uh, but yeah, all right, on to the next one. All right, next up is Cross the Streams, and this puzzle is by Eric Fox. Um, another new one for me. Um, hopefully it'll go better than, uh, the, the, um, I don't even, I, 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 it was so bad, I don't even remember the name of the puzzle type. Um, what was it? Triplace. <laughs> Triplace. Hopefully this will go better than the Triplace. Um, shade some cells so that all shaded cells form one orthogonally connected area. No two by two region may be entirely shaded. Clues outside the grid represent the links of the blocks of consecutive shaded cells in the corresponding row or column in order. A question mark represents one block of an unknown number of cells. An asterisk represents any number of blocks of shaded cells, including none at all. So an asterisk doesn't, doesn't tell us anything, does it? I don't think an asterisk tells us anything. Does an asterisk tell us anything? So I guess an asterisk, the point of an asterisk is because there could be a block and instead of putting a question mark which tells you there's for sure a block, they wanna make it so there could be a block or could not, I don't know. I'm not sure what an asterisk does. Okay, I guess we'll find out. Um, so basically I think this is like nonograms um, where you're, you're shading, so like one, one, one could be, you know, one, 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 something like that. But you couldn't put one, one next to each other because that would be a block of size two, actually. Um, but, um, with the additional rule that no two by two region can be entirely shaded, so we can't do anything like that anywhere in the grid. And, um, all the shaded cells have to be one orthogonally connected area. So we couldn't have shaded cells here, and then unshaded, and then more shaded cells over here. Essentially. I think that's what's going on. Okay. I'm gonna reset the timer, give it a try, we'll see how it goes. Okay, so... It's a 9x9 nine nine grid. Um, we're familiar with 9x9 nine nine grids. Um, usually we're putting numbers in those 9x9 nine nine, nine nine grids, though. So... 2, 3, and 2 is seven, and we have to have a gap in between, so it's gonna have to be two, three, and two. Okay, good. Now, okay, good, so I can, I'm gonna, um, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Maybe I'm gonna make them green. I'll highlight them green once they're done. Uh, okay, so that's our one there, so that one's done. This one has to be two. Now, remember, our shaded cells all have to be orthogonally connected, so this is gonna have to go here, which is our two. So that one's green. This makes me, this makes me uncomfortable, this uh, checkerboard pattern here, because <laughs> of cave. If you know cave puzzles, you'll know why this makes me uncomfortable. Um, question mark, and then one. Okay, so, uh, it doesn't really, oh, the shaded cells here, we've got to continue. So, kind of like cave. If, except, yeah, it's like, it's like cave, where our shaded cells have to, well, and no, it's, it's a little different. But kind of. <laughs> this time the shaded cells are like the, 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 it's the wrong color, but we're trying to make them all connect. Like the cave. Okay, the three here. I gotta focus on the puzzle. Stop talking. Okay, the three gives us that. And then, see, this asterisk here tells me nothing. Because it could be, 
The rules say an asterisk represents any number of blocks, including none at all. So it could just be a zero and then what's the point? Okay. Three, one, three is set. Okay. Same, same deal. I should have looked at that. Um, I got to remember this is a gap puzzle, so it's gonna, we're going to have some obvious things. Okay. This one has got to be that one there. So the question mark is this cell here, so we don't know if it continues or not. Uh, we've got another one. Now this, okay. I think, I think we can't have a region without a clue. Is that true? It doesn't say that, but that's what I'm implying from the asterisks. So I'm going to, well, it doesn't really matter. Never mind. Never mind. It doesn't matter. I was going to say we can't shade this one because the question mark has to be this shaded cell. But we can't shade that one anyways because the, they all have to be connected. So that's unshaded. Never mind. Um, two. Okay, so this has to be two. It could go up or down, though. Two, three, two. This is also seven. So this is the same thing. Okay, uh, so that's the final one for this one. And the two, oh, no, no, that's not a two. That's a question mark. It looked like a two out of the corner of my eye when I was looking down here because of the curve at the top, but it's not a two. Uh, but it does have to come up because the shaded cells all have to connect. So hmm, if this went down, we'd have to unshade. Okay, uh, and that's the question marks. We don't know. Hmm. Don't know much about that yet. So asterisk three asterisk. Ah, ah, okay. So if this if this comes down, it's four. So that would have to be the asterisk at the top. But then we don't have room to do a three down there. So this actually can't connect there. And that has to be the asterisk clue up there. Now this has to be part of a three. And so that other asterisk is a zero. Now this has to come up just to be all connected. That gives us the two there. Um, and that forces all of that. Nice, now this whole section only has one way to kind of get out to connect to the rest of the shaded cells, which is that way. So this is the question mark block. Now we need a, a link three over here somehow. All of this up here um, doesn't necessarily have to connect right there. Oh, is this? Oh. Hmm. So now, now I'm thinking that you don't have to have every block clued because this asterisk here would seem to indicate we can only have one block here but if that one is our one then the puzzle is broken so that must not be the case okay good to know um ah this this shaded section here has to come out this way and that's going to be our question mark so this one is the two, it's gotta go up or down. And there has to be a one somewhere down here. Asterisk, two, asterisk. Yeah, okay, I think that's right. This one's gotta come out. Just trying to connect the shaded cells together. That's part of the question mark. Um, obviously we can have unshaded, or unclued cells because we have no clues in these three columns. So of course you can have unclued, okay. Um, so then I still don't understand the point of the asterisks. There's probably a, a point to them and I'm just missing it. I'm just I'm just being slow. 
Um, so, you know. Oh, the... <laughs> okay. Those of you who follow my Gap videos will know what I'm about to say and why I'm so frustrated. What happens if we shade that? What does that do? Or this one, for instance. No two by two. Why can I never remember the no two by two rule? Okay. Okay. No two by two. No two by two region can be shaded. So that gives us this. <sighs> oh man, okay. Um, so I want to say that this one has to be shaded to make this all part of the question mark, but I'm not convinced that that has to be true because we know that we can have unclued regions, so... Why couldn't it do that? I'm not sure. Okay. Um, anyways, moving on. No two by two region can be shaded. Is there any other two by twos that I'm missing? I don't think so. Not yet. I'll forget it again though. I, it's just, I, I cannot remember the two by two. <laughs> uh, we've got our three here. Um, That's the question mark. This has to be a two. And there has to be a one down here somewhere. What do, what do I need to do here? Man, I'm, I am struggling with the gaps today. What's the deal? This one has to be part of a two. But if it comes down, you could still put a one there. If it goes up, you've got room for a one. The question mark doesn't really tell us anything other than that there's, we know there's three, so this can't go all the way down through. That's about all that's telling us. One of these two has to be in because of the three, at least one of those two. Oh, well, we can't do this for the three, because this would be isolated down here. So it can't be all the way over there. This one has to be in. These two both have to... No, they don't. Yeah, they do. Well, right. Oh. And this one has to... So this has to come up. So this has to be the three. Okay, there we go. Um... And, and we, we have to have the one in this row has to be above one of these three. So we can do that, because these have to connect up to get out. And now, oh, this is the one right there. Okay. So now this is two. Up or down. There has to be a gap some... No, there doesn't, because the asterisk can be zero. So what I said before was wrong. This could come straight down through. That could be our question mark, and the asterisk can be zero. One of these two is in. Because of the one. And whichever one it is has to continue up. So it's got to either be here or here. Which means what? What does that mean? It means this piece down here can only connect to one of these two. And so at least one of these two then has to connect through the top, but... I don't know. I I just I'm struggling with these gaps today. What's the deal? 
These are supposed to be uh, easy-ish, theoretically, but I just... Okay, this has to connect to something, but it, it seems like it can connect either way. Two, the one. Okay, I'm gonna go with the theory that this question mark means you can only have one region in the row. Maybe only in an asterisk can you have more than one? I'm not really sure. All right, I'm gonna go with that. I'm gonna say this has to be this way. But I'm not sure. And now we could go one more over, but we can't continue because of the two by two rule, which I definitely remember. Um, so now I feel like this could come down or up the two. This one has to be up, this is that too. We can't do both of these. But wouldn't, oh, we can't do, okay. Right, this can't go up and down. If it goes up, we can't connect this piece to anything. So this has to come down like that. This has to come up. So there you go, that was the solution. I guess maybe someone can clarify the rules for me there. Um, I guess what I'm confused about is I feel like we can't have an unclued region but yet we have unclued regions in these columns and we have extra regions that don't have asterisks in this row. So I guess I'm not sure on the rules on that one. Maybe there's a simple explanation and I'm just not understanding it. So um, if anybody knows, let me know on that one. All right, on to the next one. All right, the next puzzle is a Sukoro. Um, it's by Shai. Uh, Another new one, <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Uh, place a number into some cells so that all cells with numbers form one orthogonally connected area. Okay, usual kind of stuff, making one region that's all connected. Numbers represent how many of the up to four orthogonally adjacent cells contain numbers. Okay, so we're just going with like this two is telling us how many of the orthogonally adjacent, not um, like sometimes you're talking about up to eight with the diagonal, but this is just talking about the four orthogonally adjacent. No two orthogonally adjacent cells may contain the same number. Okay, so, so like we couldn't put a two right there. And I'm assuming if we, oh, okay, if we click it goes through the numbers. If, oh, right click gives you an X. Oh, okay, so right click gives you an X and then another right click gives you a circle. So I guess the circle would mean has to be a number. And then, oh, and then, oh, we only have, the numbers have to be one through four, apparently. I don't see that in the rules. Apparently the numbers have to be one through four. Okay. All right, well, link in the description. Um, reset the timer, see how this goes. Um, okay, well the one, the two is the, the cell for the one, so we can't go there. Um, and in fact, I think we can do that on all of these ones that are already touching another cell because that other cell is its one uh, the two here in the corner has to have a cell there and it's gonna have to be well it could be a one three or four because it's just orthogonally adjacent it doesn't matter what else is in the row in the column it just can't be a two okay oh the four has to have numbers 
on all four sides. So we can do some circles there. Um, this two has to have one in one of those two. And whichever one that is, that's also gonna be the second number for that one. So this is an X. And they have to be um, all connected. And so you can see this area here is blocked down here. So it's gotta come out. So we've gotta have numbers in those just to get connected, which means this is an X. And so this one, right, and so, right, we, we know that, I was gonna say this could be one, three, or four, but remember the numbers tell you how many connected cells are numbers. And we know that three cells are connected to this one. So this is a three. This has to be, well, it can't be a one, because we know it has at least two, and it can't be a three, so it has to be a two or a four. It can't be a four, because there's an X there, so this is a two. This has to be a one or a three. It can't be a one, because again, it already has two connected, so this is a three. This is two or three, but you can't put, we can't put uh, candidates in there. This two means it's already done. It's got its two. Um, where do we look next? This one has to, okay, so only one of these two can be a number because the one can only have one more. So the three has to have both of those. So this is now, look, it's touching three, it's touching three numbers. So it has to be at least three and it can't be a three. So this has to be a four, which means this is a number. This one is already touching two. So it has to be at least two, but it could be two or four, I suppose. This three has to have those. So this is now touching three cells and it has to be not a three. So it has to be a four. So this is a circle. This is touching a three and a four. It's touching two cells and it can't be a three or a four. So this is a two, which gives us an X there, which means this one could be one or two actually. This is interesting. Uh, this has to be a circle because this two has to have two numbers connected to it. This already sees two, Oop. so it has to be at least two. It can't be two, so it has to be a three or a four, but okay, let's see the connected cells. Somehow this thing, oh, this right here, this can't, this has to connect. So these have to be circles down here. So this sees two, so it's two. This already sees two, but it can't be a two, so it has to be a three or a four. The most it can have is three, so it's gotta be a three with that one. That means this is an X. This can't be one or three. It can't be a four, because you can't have a number off the grid, so it's gotta be a two, which gives us an X there, So which means this sees two, it's a two. This sees two, it's a two. This is two or three. It could be either one at this point, and this. Yeah, we don't know anything about that one yet. Um, oh, the three. So this has to be a number. It can't be... A, oh, it's a one. It's a one. Because it only connects to one. Two. This could be a two or a three. Let's look at this. Okay. This could even be a one, actually. This one, I think it could be almost anything. Oh, the three here it means these are circles. This three now sees three, so that's an X, which tells us this is a three. This is a two. This one, it can't be a four, it can't be a three. So it's a one or a two, but it already sees two, so it has to be a two. This is it sees more than one, can't be a two or a four, it's a three, and it sees three, so that's an X. It's one or two. This two means that's an X there, which means this is a circle and this is a circle just to connect the one. 
So this is a two, this is a three, this is a two, this is a two. This can see at most three, yeah, it sees at least one. So this is a two or a three, it could be either one though. This has to be a three or a four, so it's gotta see at least one of these. This is one or two, yeah, okay, it's one or two. So where do we go next? Oh, I was making really good progress. Now, now I'm stuck. Stuck, stuck. Okay, this three connects, because one of these, oh, the th it's a three. So both of those are in. And now the that three has all of its um, three cells, so this is an X. This sees two already, can't be a two, it has to be a three. That's a circle. This sees three already, can't be a three, it has to be a four, which gives us a circle there. It sees two. This one sees, oh, uh, this sees two already, and it can't be a two or a four, so it has to be a three, making this a circle, which is a two, this is a three. This one already sees two, but it can't be a three or a four, so it has to be a two, giving us an X there. This is a two. Now all of these down here connect through this area up here. This is one or two. This is, oh, this can't be a three or a four, and it already sees two, so it's gotta be two. This gives us a circle there, making this a two. This is now a four. That one is done. This is a one. This is a two, and this is an X. Oh no, what did I do wrong? Oh no, the two. Oh, I have a two here. It sees three cells. Okay, it's a two. It already sees two, so that makes this an X. This is a one. This has to connect up this way. This one is a two. It can't be a one or a two. It can't be a three, it has to be a four. So this has to be a circle, it's a one. This is a two, there we go. All right. Um, and I guess I'm continuing my, uh, uh, this is gonna be a video full of um, birds. I'm getting birds on every puzzle. All right, well, it was a fun puzzle anyways. I was slow, but it was fun, so who cares, right? It doesn't really matter. As long as I enjoy the puzzle, that's all that matters. So there you go. That was Socorro by Shy. On to the next one that maybe I will be more familiar with. All right, next up is Shimaguni. Shimaguni, Shimaguni, Shimaguni? I don't know, something like that. Um, when I opened the puzzle, uh, I noticed it's also called Islands, apparently, which is much easier to say. So Islands, up next is Islands. Um, this one's by Jovial. Um, we're shading a single group of orthogonally connected cells in each region. Shaded groups may not share a bold border. Okay, so basically we're going to shade, you know, something like this, and then we couldn't have the one in this region couldn't be connected across the bold border. Okay. Um, regions with numbers must contain the indicated amount of shaded cells. Okay, and remember they have to be a, a, a single group, so I don't think we could do like two and two like that because it has to be... Yeah, a single group. Um, each region must contain at least one shaded cell, okay? And no two adjacent regions may contain the same number of shaded cells. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, so, so this one has two, and so the ones connected to it can't also have two. Okay, cool. All right, I think I understand the rules. <laughs> Hope for, um, uh, you know, good progress this time. All right, anyways. <laughs> Resetting the timer, link in the description, here we go. So, I mean, we get some gimmies here with these singles, right? That's a, those are easy ones. So now, we know that this one can't have, oh, well you can't shade that one. 
Oh, right, we can't shade, oh, we can't shade any of these. Ah, ah, and this one, ugh. see? Thank you, Jovial, you did a good job. Not that the other people haven't, but um, of telegraphing this right here because I know that we can't have one in this next region. And so I can't shade any of those three or else it would be a single. So now we have two. So now this one, we can do all this. This one can't have one. It also can't have two because it's connected to a region with two. So it has to have all three of these. Beautiful. This one has to have four and there's only three there. So it's gotta be these four. Okay. I can already tell this puzzle is gonna go better than the last several, mainly because of me, not because of the puzzle setters. All the setters do a wonderful job with these. And so don't take any of my criticisms as a criticism of the puzzles. This can't happen because it's a single. Um, this one can't be one, so it has to be two, which means, Oh, this can't be a single either because it's connected to a single. This one can't be one or two because it's connected to regions that are one and two. So that's a three. Now this one can't be one because it's connected to there. So it's got to be two. This, ooh, this could be a single actually. So it could be one of those. Or it could be all three of these. It has to be one or the other. This is a one or a two. Don't know. Okay. Um, oh, this is a single one. Look, that was the only one left which means this one can't be a single, it's gotta be a two. This one cannot be a two or a one or a four. It's gotta be all three of those. This one cannot be a single shade because it's connected to a one. So it can't be a three or a one or a four or a two. It's connected to a two here. So it can't be one, two, three or four. So it's gotta be all five. Now this one Oh, come on, last a little bit. There's four cells here. It can't be a one, can't be a two, can't be a three. It has to be all four. Okay. And so this one is a single, which means this one can't be a single. So it's a three. That rules out all those. Two. Complete. All right. See, certain puzzle types, you just, you just get it, you know? And it's different for everybody. Um, some of you may have, on a couple of those previous puzzles, when I was really struggling, you may have been like, come on, what's wrong with you? And then get to this one and, and not quite know what to do with it, but that's just the way puzzles go sometimes, you know? Okay, that makes me feel better. Um, I gotta check the time, because a crab, I'll take a crab on that. Crab? Perfect. Okay, I'm happy with a crab. <laughs> All right, on to the next one. All right, up next is a Slither Link, and I have done Slither Link before. Not a lot of them, but a few of them. Um, so I at least kind of know what the how the rules work. So we're connecting some pairs of orthogonally adjacent dots to form a single non-intersecting loop. So this is pretty typical stuff in pencil puzzles, drawing a loop, shading regions, you know. Um, so what we're doing here is we're drawing um, a loop, you know, something, oops, something like this. It can't intersect itself it can't do anything like that um, it has to be one loop can't branch um, clues represent the number of edges drawn surrounding the clue up to four so um, all that means is so like this two here could have there's a maximum of four around any clue right this two just means that two of them have to be shaded this one means that one have to be or not shaded but an edge that's drawn and that's it you can also right click and put x's in you want to so that's it that's all the rules so um reset the timer see how this one goes so okay so the three on the in the corner here uh, yep he used it in four places okay three in the corner is interesting um i guess one thing we could do quick before we do that though is we can x around the zeros just get the kind of the gimmies out of the way but the three in the corner is cool because um so Think about what you could do. So you're gonna have to have one not edge, right? Well, if you did this, where is this gonna connect to? Because it's part of a loop, right? So you can't have the missing one be on the edge. So both of these have to be in. So we can do that on all four of these corners. And now look at these two threes down here and we're gonna have the same, oh, we're gonna have this in all four corners. Again, same thing. This is, this is something that's good to do on a, um, a, an intro puzzle, like which these gaps are generally supposed to be. Um, 
is to use kind of the same idea in several places so that once somebody figures out what's going on here, they can apply that in several places and it kind of reinforces it and gives them a little bit of a, a boost into the puzzle, I guess, an, an easy way into the puzzle. So right here, if you think about, so one of these two has to be an X, right? If this was the X, what would that mean? It would mean this, but then it would also mean the same thing for the next three and we'd have a little tiny loop here. So that can't be the X, so this has to go this way. Um, we can do the same thing up here. So we have to draw that line between the threes. And then we can get an X. And now, can this be the gap here? Obviously, it can, right? Can this be the gap? No, because we're branching here. In fact, this has to be the gap. Right, yeah. Because otherwise it would branch. So the two threes together on the edge of the grid end up being like that. In fact, I think two threes together, even if it's not on the edge of the grid, have to do that zigzaggy pattern like that. Um, and now since this is an X, this has to continue. We can do that with all of these. And in fact, we can continue these as well. So there we go. Now, the other thing is when I was putting these X's in, I noticed we have twos with X is on two of their sides. So there has to be something like this and these have to turn then because the X is next to them. We get the same thing here. Again, we're reusing the same, the same logic in a couple places, which sometimes in a puzzle you would not like to do because it, um, you know, kind of like if they have a symmetrical grid, sometimes it feels like, well, you're only solving half the grid because you're just copying the logic to the other side. But in an intro puzzle, this is a good thing to do to give you some stuff to get started. Now this one here is hitting two X's, so it's got a turn. Um, we probably got the same thing somewhere else. Oh, this one here now has its one line, so we can put some X's in there. This can't go that way, it would create a branch. This has to connect there. Um, this has gotta go this way, can't go up there. We can't go there, we'd create a small loop, so it's gonna go this way, which is the two for the two there. Again, we can't create a small loop. Now this one um, can only have one. We can't go here, because we'd create a loop, so this has to go here, which is the one that makes that turn. This go down here. Um, Right here, once we get to this tip, um, there's two options, because we have to use three of the four. So it can either go around this way, or it can go around this way. But either way, these two are in, and one of those two is the X. Uh, we can't have anything there. We can't do one here, because it would have to connect there, and it, oh, but you can go across there, Never mind. Never mind. that is possible. Uh, we can't go here, though, actually. So, can go. this can go straight across though, can't it? No, this one right here. Look, if this goes, if this goes up, where's it gonna go? It would be stuck. So it's gonna have to go this way. And now we can't do um, this across here. So it's gotta come down like that, which makes that go there. Very nice. Now this is the same thing once we get to the three. Oh, we've already got the X's here because of the two. So it doesn't even matter, but um, we got to do that. Let's see. This three. Um, so this piece here. Um, so every, all four dots on a three, all four corners on a three have to be part of um, one of the lines. Right? So you're going to miss an edge, but you can't miss a dot. So this dot has to be connected one way or the other. And if it's connected to one of them, it's gotta be connected to the other because you have to come in and out of the dot and you can't go up or to the left. So it's gotta be like that. And now if this comes over here, where is it going to? Nowhere, it can't connect to anything. So it's gotta go that way, which means this does this. That's the empty one on the three. Um, this has to connect down there. This can't go that way. It would create a, a branch. Um, this needs to, oh, this can't go there. So one of these two has to be in, right? And if this went to the right, we can't create a loop, so it would have to go up. And now you would end up with three on the two. So it's actually got to connect there, which means this one has to be the other one. Can't go over there, it'll get trapped. Um, remember the three 
once we get in here, both of the other ones have to be in. And so now you can't come down here, you wouldn't be able to get three there. So this has to turn, it's gonna force it up there. That's gotta be the empty there. And now, uh-oh, I broke it. I broke it! Ah! <laughs> What'd I do? Okay. Ah. Uh, how did I do that? This has to connect to something. Oh, it's over here. It's gotta do that. I don't know how I ended up with that on the two. How did I do that? I don't know, I did something wrong, but it's like this. There we go, okay. And then, yep, up uh, here like that. There we go. Hmm. I don't know, I maybe, I maybe I said one thing and drew another thing on the two. I don't know, I did something wrong there. That's okay. All right, that was fun. That was a Slither Link by Turganis. So Slither Link is an interesting one. It's different because we've done a lot of region shading. Um, we've done a lot of loops, but I don't know. This one just feels different than the other loops to me. Maybe because you're drawing loops on the edges of the grids and a lot of them are through the centers of the cells. I don't know. For some reason, Slither Link just seems like it's uh, different than a lot of the other ones to me. So there you go. All right, that was Slither Link. All right, next up is Slovak Sums by Freddie Hand. Never heard of it? Um, I've heard of Freddie Hand. I haven't heard of Slovak Sums. Um, so we're going to place numbers from the range given outside the grid, which is one, two, four in this one. So we're placing the numbers one through four into the empty cells so that each row and column contains each number once. So we're not going to... So we're going to put one through four in the row, but... There's six cells in this row one, for example. So you're gonna have, okay, so if you click, got it. We can shade, oh right, we're on puzzling here. So yeah, we can shade some and then put one, two, three, and four somehow in there. And that doesn't count the, the clued cells. So this two doesn't count as the two for the row. Um, a clue contains a number which represents the sum of the numbers in orthogonally adjacent unclued cells. So this nine is giving us the sum of these four cells um, and some quantity of circles which represent how many of the cells. Okay, so this nine is telling us, the three dots is telling us three of these four cells contain a number and the sum of those three cells is nine. Okay, I think I understand. Cool, so um, yeah. All right, there you go. I'm gonna see how this one goes. I'm gonna reset the timer. Link in the description, give it a try. So the two, I mean, these, these have to both be um, ones, right? Because it has to have two cells and they have to sum to two. So those have to be ones. This three, so these are going to have to be one, a one, a one, one and a two in some order. This three is going to have to have... Okay, let's look at the bigger ones. This 12. So all four of these have to be numbers. But you could have, they all have to be fours. No, they all have to be at least three, right? Four, four, oh no, because you could do four, four, one, and three. Ah, oh, you could have a one. No, you can't, yeah, yeah. Ah, but these two can't both be fours. These two could both be fours. Do you have to have... No, you could do four, three, three, two. That's the only way to not have two fours on the 12. Or you could have four threes, I guess. But you can't do four threes. You can't do four threes because you can't... You can have at most two because you can't repeat a digit in a row or column. So four, three, three, two. So you're either going to have two fours or two threes in here. Can't do two fours on here. Could do two fours here. Okay, what about the 11? Is the 11 any better? We can't do a one on any of these three, so these are at least two. Um, this 
So these two are five minimum, six, seven minimum. So you could do a four if you did the minimums there. These are a maximum of seven, 11. So we can't do the maximum, but this could be as small as one then. Oh, but the three here means we, we have to have a one and a two. So this can't be three or four. This is a two. This can't be a two. This then has to be a one. This has to be the one and the two for the three, which means these have to not be numbers here. Okay, so these are three. These need to be eight, so they both have to be fours. Okay, there we go. This is what we needed to look at. Um, this four means you can't put a four in either of those, and you can't put two fours in here, so we can only have one four. One of these has to be a four, and it can't be this one because of the four there. Okay. I think I'm getting a handle on this now. So four, so we need to do eight here and three. We can't do a four. They have to have a one because three, eight and three has to have a one. Um, and these two can't be ones. So this has to be a one. This has to be, no, wait, five, seven. Wait, what did I do? It doesn't have to have a one, does it? No, we can repeat a digit. <laughs> I'm so used to doing killer cages and stuff. If, if you have... Eight and three, without repeating a digit, it has to have a one. But this doesn't have to have a one. This has to have three, three, two. It has to be three, three, two. So these two have to be, well, this one has to be a three. And these have to be a two, three pair. Okay, that's what's going on. All right, now the nine, we've got four. We need five more, two, three. So one of these has to be a two or a three. It could be two, three there. This could be a three. Okay. Um... One, three, so this, ah, here we've got five or six, so we're gonna need two or three on one of these. If this is a two, then we need a three, which would have to be down here. If this is a three, we would need a two, which would have to be there. So this is either three, two, or two, three. Oh, but the two there gives us the one and the two here. This two is gonna give us this one and two. So neither of these can be a two now. So this has to be a three. No, this has to be, this has to be a two. Um, and this has to be a three, there we go. That two makes this a three. Now we've got seven on the nine, so we need to have a two, which can't be there. There we go. So that, is that all of the clues? I think that's all the clues. Now we just have to finish putting the digits into the grid. So we need a two up here, which has to be in one of those. The th Three can't be in any of those, so it's gotta be one of these over here. Okay, uh, two, two can't be down here. Okay, so this is a two. The three can't be in any of those, so this is a three. Now we need a three in this column, which can't be there. It can't be, oh, right, wait, we need to, we need to shade some, some of our unshaded cells here. Here we go. Those can't be shaded, okay. So now the three can't be here, it's gotta be up here. Four has to be over here. One can't be there. So one of these is a one. We need a four, which can't be any of those. This is the four, this is the one. Now we need a two, which has to be up there. Um, so this is done, this is done. This one needs a four, which has to be here. Three, four, this thing needs a one, which has to be there. We need a three, it's gotta be over here, which puts the three up there. Now we need a four somewhere in this column, which has to be there, puts that four there. And then a one there, and a two, there we go. Hooray! All right, so we succeeded on that one. Um, Slovak sums. That was Slovak sums. That was interesting. It was it was sort of um, you know Sudoku adjacent because we're putting digits in the grid and not repeating in a row or a column. But um, interesting. That was an interesting idea. I like the idea of it. Kind of felt like um, it was almost like a killer cage situation or an arrow almost. Like this was an arrow with the nine, you know, three, four, two, kind of hitting those but you didn't really know where the arrow was going to go. It was it was like an arrow in the surrounding four cells, but... Hmm. Interesting idea. Yeah, very cool. 
All right, um, I think maybe I've got time to do one more. So moving on. All right, our next puzzle is a Dachi loop. Um, this is by Shy. So draw a non-intersecting loop through the centers of some cells that passes through every white circle and no black circles, okay? Within a region, the loop must either turn on every white circle or pass straight through every white circle. Okay, so within the region, it's so, it, it, it almost reminds me of, um, yeah, I, I want to say moon, sun, just because within the region you do the same thing, but it's a little different than that. Um, and there's no alternating issues. Okay, yeah, none of that stuff. Okay, so, all right, here we go. Um, I think I understand. I mean, we're just drawing a loop, um, you know, like usual stuff, and... You have to go through the white cells, you can't go through the black cells. And if you turn, so basically if we if we go straight, then the other one also has to go straight. Actually all of them within the region have to go straight through. And if you turn, then the other one also has to turn. Okay. I think I got it, okay. Reset the timer, here we go. So, I think right here is the place to look, right? Like we have to go through this white cell. There's no way to go through it without turning. And therefore we must also turn in this cell. And now we have to avoid closing the loop. Have to avoid closing the loop, which forces this one to go straight. And so now they all have to go straight through on the white cells. And these also have to go straight through. Right, and you can't go straight through both of them this way because there's not a way for these two to both kind of get out of the the region there. So they've got to go straight through that way. And, and so now, right, if you go straight in these, this one is going to have nowhere to connect to. So they're going to have to be turning ones like that. Um, the, this, this is forced over here. And this is forced, so again, they're both forced to go straight. Okay, we turn, turn, they're forced to go straight. Very nice, we're just pushing the, we're just kind of pushing each other, forcing each other around just to avoid closing the loop. Um, and now this is here. Mm, this could, I feel like this could turn or go straight here. Oh no, it can't. <laughs> I, I, I was thinking of these two as their own region, but they're part of this region up here, so this has to go straight. Because it's... Um, these are already straight through, so these have to go straight through as well. Now this one... Oh, okay, so... Um... All right, this cell here. You can't come from the right. You can't come from the bottom because there's nowhere for that to go. So it's got to do this, which means it's a turning one. So this has to turn. This will turn. That'll work. Goes here. And now... This one, I mean, this is just like up here. You have to, since it's on the in a kind of a corner here, you have to come in. So that makes these turning ones. So this is a turn. This is going to be a turning one up here, which is good. Um, now I think we have to do that. Going to come out this way, come in here. Um, these both go this way. We can't create a small loop, so it's got to go here. It's going to push this one. So now these have to be straights. Uh, straight through, straight through, straight through. These are straight through. This comes up there. And we go there. There we go. Cool. That was a good puzzle to end on, I think, for the day. Um, so that was Dachi Loop by Shy. That was a lot of fun. Um, I'm going to check. I'm curious to know how... Um, I'm sure I probably got a crab. Yep, I got a crab. Um, it was close to a sloth, not too far. But um, two minutes is the sloth time. 5.45 was the crab time. So I was well under the crab time. So it's a good puzzle to end on after um, getting several birds earlier. And I think my first birds I've gotten too. So that was, that was a little rough. But hey, you know, that's how puzzles go sometimes. You know, um, I think I see a lot of people say things like, oh, I'm not a very good solver. As if like, that's uh, like, so what? I'm not very fast. So what? Who cares? Did you have fun solving it? That's all that matters. Um, it doesn't matter if you're fun, or if it doesn't matter if you're fast, as long as you had fun. Um, 
uh, I'm sure all of you are fun. Um, but yeah, I mean, I had fun solving, even the ones where I was struggling, it was fun to struggle with them. So, you know, who cares if you're slow, right? Um, that doesn't have to be a bad thing. So there you go. That was some more gap puzzles. Um, now I got to go pick my kids up from school. So that's going to be it for today. I have kind of fallen behind on the gaps. So, um, you know, maybe I'll do a few gap videos coming up here more frequently just to get caught up. Or maybe I'll do like a super, super video where I do, you know, 15 of them to get caught up. I did um, look ahead at the list and I, I'm definitely going to be doing another gap puzzle soon because coming up on the list are Ice Barn and Ice Loam and I really like those. So I really want to do those puzzles. So um, there's also a few more of the supersized ones that I'm hoping to do sometime soon. So um, maybe lots of gap puzzles to come. Um, and by the way, for those who like to point out, now you shouldn't say gap puzzle because gap is genuinely approachable pencil puzzle. So gap puzzle means you're saying genuinely approachable pencil puzzle puzzle. Well, I'll have you know that when I say gap puzzle, I'm saying gap GAP puzzle. So it's still okay. Sure. That's my that's my reasoning. If I say gap puzzle, then just assume that I mean I'm pronouncing it as a gap with one P, not two P's. Okay. Anyways, there you go. Um, I'm going to say like and subscribe because I'm supposed to say that. And I'll see you again soon with some more puzzles. Thanks. Bye.